it's just when we were walking, our feet became like this. A night video. We don't make very many night videos. Not at all, we don't. But what we're doing tonight works better at night or early in the morning. Hey, look at those cows. Yeah. Hi, girl, if you look at the grass, snow everywhere, there's no grass. Tonight, what are we doing? Catching chickens. We're catching some chickens. Winter is coming and feeding cows and chickens and ducks and goats and all the animals we have over the winter becomes more expensive because they can't eat grass, they're not eating bugs, they're not getting all those supplements to their diet. And so the cost of feeding these animals goes up which means every year before winter comes, we reduce the size of our herds. The unproductive animals turn into more productive in the form of meat. So tonight we're gonna to load up some chickens that are gonna become some stew, stew birds. So we're gonna get some crates and he's here to make sure I don't load up any of his chickens or my daughters. Somebody was asking in one of our recent videos why they don't see the dogs running around playing in more of the vlogs. That's why. The dogs and vlogging don't mix very well when they're not being very closely monitored. We have a whole lot of egg laying chickens. Production goes down for the winter, and some of these chickens are now past their prime. It's been two years. They've laid as many productive eggs as they're going to. And uh, so we've decided to shrink the herd down and use the non-productive hens now. We're going to have butchered and turn into chickens that we eat. can put in the stew pot or chicken pot pie. Now, I know some of you don't like this idea. You have your egg-laying hens, and you don't want to butcher them even after they've stopped being productive. Who's like that? My son's chickens, he raised since they were chicks. He spent years with this flock, they're all named. And I am not going to force my son uh, to process his pet birds. They're his pets, and it's okay. They're sort of pets. They're sort of pets, they're farm pets. Yeah. Uh, he cares for them, he knows them all by name. Which one's that over there? Cake. That's Cake walking around. Uh, they get a pass because he cares about them, and. We can make that decision. We're not a farm business. We don't have to be profitable. We can have just some pets. However, the chickens that are mine that are Pastor Prime and my mother-in-law's hens that are here that are Pastor Prime, uh, those birds are not pets. They're not named. They don't have any special uh, reason to stick around here. And because they're Pastor Prime, we're gonna process them. So if you're a person who doesn't want to do this to chickens, then don't. You can keep them and let them live out their happy life on grass. But for us, we got a lot of animals to feed over the winter, and whichever non-productive ones don't have a special meaning, we're gonna be processing tomorrow. We're gonna actually be taking the process. My son is here to make sure that none of his birds accidentally wind up in a crate, and uh, none of his sisters do either, so we're gonna make sure that those don't. Do we need a net for this? Yeah, we'll need a net. The reason that we do this at night or early in the morning, the chickens are on roost. They're in a semi-sleepy state. Now, as you can see, ours have kind of woken up, so this won't be super easy, uh, but it'll be easier than it would be during the day trying to run around the yard and catch them. So, Plus, we have the door closed, so should be able to get the ones we need. I'm gonna try to get 10 to maybe 15 chickens tonight. Let's see if I can get that many approved. Sure, which one is that one? All right.
winter, the winter feed bill is always very high and uh, I, we don't love doing this, but it's one of those necessities of homesteading. You gotta be able to afford it. You can't homestead beyond your means and to feed all these birds throughout this winter at this many birds with so little productivity, uh, it would not be a smart decision for our family right now. So I don't mind keeping my sons and I don't mind keeping my daughters. Those are special to them. Uh, but the other ones, it's just a decision. It's not easy to do, but it's one of those decisions that you'll have to make as a homesteader. Are you gonna feed unproductive animals throughout the winter? If not, they've lived a wonderful life. Uh, they're gonna go be processed on a farm right nearby us who's all set up for it tomorrow. And uh, these birds will feed our family. We'll turn them into delicious chicken pot pies, stews, they're going to chicken soups. Uh, they will feed all of us. And that's the idea of homesteading, raising your own family's food to the best of your ability, knowing it had the best life it could. It does make me sad to see these egg layers uh, be processed, but it's part of knowing where your food comes from. And if you decide to get into homesteading, it's a decision that you're gonna have to be ready to handle. Whether or not you're gonna have your, even your egg layers, your dairy animals, that sort of thing. If you're gonna process them for your table when they're no longer productive, or if you have the means to not do that. Uh, for us in this circumstance, coming into a winter with lots of animals to feed, we just don't have the means to keep feeding these birds uh, that are no longer giving back. So they'll give back one more meal, maybe two more meals per bird, we'll get some leftovers from it too. So. That rooster right there, Fluffy Foot, we call him. He really should be going. He's a big consumer. I just can't do it. He's named Fluffy Foot. He's been there since our farm in Squash Hollow. He's a nice rooster, he's not mean. Pays to be a nice rooster. All right, Fluffy Foot. It's not always cut and dry, these things. Sometimes compassion, your feelings, your emotions attached to these animals. It clouds your better judgment and uh, in this instance, Fluffyfoot should absolutely be going. I just can't do it. So Fluffyfoot stays. All right, let me dump That Fluffyfoot, my dad always liked him. He called him the French nobility chicken. So uh, dad will pass that one for you. French nobility stays. No French Revolution today. But we got a really good group of birds here. It's gonna be a lot of food for our family. And uh, yeah, they're all ready to go. We're gonna bring them over now. None of them are mine. Double checked? Yep. They all pass your uh, inspection? Yep. Why don't we stack the crates on top of each other? <laughs> Cause they'll poop on each other. When you're delivering birds, if you're gonna stack the crates on top of each other, put something in between the birds uh, because they'll poop through that and be pooping on each other. And you wanna to try to make these last hours of their life as peaceful and not <laughs> sad as possible. And just putting them not on top of each other is one of those ways. And uh, making sure you don't overpack the crates, nobody's overheating. Uh, you know, just consider, try to make it as smooth and, and kind on the animals as possible leading up to when they're finally processed. Show us who's left, bud. Of my Araucanas? Everybody, show us who's left. All right, so we have... Talk to the camera. So we have all my Araucanas, we have Fluffyfoot, this one, those ones, 
That one, 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 that one. What about that one? That one? Yeah. Let's get that one. Got me a nap. She's on the roost. It's easy on the roost. It's amazing The subtle games that you are playing And you don't even know I am It's gonna bring him tonight, but the car is stuck in the snow So I gotta get the car to move We'll take him tomorrow Since you got me on your hit list And now you got this on your conscience now I'm unresponsive oh. It's all done. The hens are now beautiful meat birds. That is a bag of hearts. We really like chicken hearts. Not something we want to throw away. They're really good. We actually ate chicken hearts on me and Kay's first date. We went to a Brazilian restaurant. There were chicken hearts there. I want to show you, even though they were egg laying chickens, that's a beautiful looking bird. And it's beautifully processed. Very nice job. Mac Farm. Mac Farm, if you're in western Pennsylvania and you're looking for someone to process birds for you, check out Mac Farm. If you're wondering why, why we didn't do our own chickens, we've done our own chickens for years, we did it. The last year or two, we started having them done for us. We don't own a chicken plucker. And when you have a lot of chickens to do, not owning a chicken plucker seriously slows down the process. And so we started bringing them to a butcher in Connecticut. And now that we're here, we do have a beautiful little space, which we showed you a few videos back, which could become a great little processing area or we could set something up outside. We could get a plucker. There's some very reasonable options out now. But the real reason we didn't do this batch is quite honestly, because moving. <laughs> moving is still affecting some of the things we do here at the farm. All my chicken butchering things, all my chicken butchering knives, and my chicken butcher cones, and my supplies, and my, just everything I use chicken butchering, it's in a box somewhere. With winter coming. Come on, Peps! A pep! Papa! Hey, hey, Peps. With winter coming, a crazy big. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Sit. With winter coming and that crazy big feed bill released. We have dogs to feed, cows to feed, goats to feed, chickens to feed. We have a lot of animals. And when animals are out on pasture and eating grass, and bugs, and all the other good stuff, that bill is not as big as it is this time of year.
That right there is why we had them butchered today. Mac Farm was very reasonable. We'll have a link in the description below if you want to contact Mac Farm. They did a great job. Eli's a really cool guy and I'm hoping in the spring to go and film him actually doing some butchering because he does it pretty much the same way we used to do it, but he is a plucker. So be cool to do a video showing the way he does it. I gotta feed my pups and then I gotta go have some dinner myself and uh, make sure all these animals get feed and water before bedtime here. So I'm gonna shut this one down. We'll see you in tomorrow's video and maybe sometime this week we'll cook up one of those, make a chicken pot pie or something. All right, you wanna shut this one down, pup? Come here, pup. Shut it down. More cow drama in tomorrow's episode of Homesteady. We're also working with Ladybug to give me a good letdown without using Luna. Since Luna is being yeah. weaned. And she's gonna mess with the camera just to tell you how annoyed she is with it. Luna, back up. We're trying to wean Luna, but she's definitely not having it. Hey, back, back, back. You should not leave your camera where the calf is, babe. Luna doesn't think she's weaned, though. The calf is not convinced she's weaned. It's Black Friday week. There's two ways you can help support Homesteady while you're shopping. You can become a Homesteady Pioneer. We're having our Black Friday sale. It's the lowest price you'll ever see our membership. You get four months for free for an entire year. Click there to take advantage of our Black Friday deal. And if you're doing any Amazon shopping for Black Friday, please remember to type in www.amsteady.com before you go to Amazon or use one of our links in any of our video descriptions or from our website, thisishomesteady.com. It's a huge help.